Hey, Bullfrog here. I'm about to head out and do some hunting. I'm going to deer hunt, but I'm also going to bring my air gun with me uh, just in case I get a shot at a hog or a coon. Now, of course, uh, if this was a state that allowed me to hunt deer with an air gun, my air gun would kill deer just fine and I could bring one weapon to do it all. But because Florida doesn't allow me to use my air gun to kill deer, I got a 50 caliber muzzle loader with me. And then I also got my 30 caliber flex. I have it detuned a little bit from when you last saw it when I was squirrel hunting with it in my last video. I had it set for 88 foot pounds shooting 50 grain JSBs at 890 feet per second. I now have it set for shooting um, 44 grain um, Predator polymags for 860 feet per second. So uh, I'm gonna get it set up and uh, let's see what I can do. There's nothing special about the place I'm hunting. It's a food plot that is a deer highway. You can hear the cars in the background. And it's one that's had a lot of deer activity lately. We just planted it with our winter rye crop. You can see the doves are coming in and eating some of the seeds that's still on the surface that didn't get buried. Good feast for them. It's about 45 minutes before dark. And over in the corner of the food plot, I saw something black moving. First I thought it was a hog, and then when I got a good look at it, I couldn't believe my eyes. That's a big old black bear, a big boar that has been causing havoc in our hunting club for six years. Nobody has ever seen this bear in person from the stand. This bear is amazingly wary. The reason for that is we're not far from the Georgia border. Across the border, they're allowed to hunt the bears for most of the year. In fact, they're allowed to chase the bears year-round, if I'm not mistaken, with dogs. They're only allowed to kill the bears within a certain season. But the bears up this way are extremely, extremely rare. They're not like the bears in the Ocala National Forest that have very little fear of man. These bears up near Jacksonville, very afraid of people. This particular boar is about seven to eight feet tall. When he wears up on his back legs, he can reach the motor on the feeders. We have to struggle to reach the motor. Some of the feeders we can't even reach when they're all the way up. Uh, he can reach them, so he's much taller than we are. And he does a lot of damage. He does about a thousand dollars worth of damage every few years. You know, just tearing down feeder motors. And get I'm going to let this encounter play out at least here in the beginning because I really want you to watch his behavior how wary he is and how he keeps smelling um, this is behavior not all that different from other animals that I have recorded when I'm wearing the hex suit of course I'm wearing the hex suit now underneath my regular camouflage um, is the hex suit interfering with his ability to, to detect me I don't know um, I don't know if it's simply a matter of the other scent control precautions that I use are really working well here, or if it's a matter of the hex suit blocking his ability to sense me, or if it's a bit of both, or if I just got really lucky, I can't say. I can say that this is just really unusual that I've been able to fool him and see him in the daytime, because up to this point this bear has never, ever, ever showed himself in the daytime ever. And it's not that he doesn't roam around in the daytime, because we do get him on trail camera during the day. It's just that nobody ever sees him in person. He's long gone before anybody can ever walk up on him, or um, when somebody's sitting in the stand, I think he smells him from a long ways off. I'm editing out most of the time he spent on the ground here laid down like this. Uh, he spent about 20 to 30 minutes laid down this way.
He's just so wary. Again, I'm editing a lot of this out. He spent most of his time just staring and smelling. He'd take a few steps and he'd stop and he'd stare and he'd smell some more. And he would just keep creeping up to the feeder that way in the darkness. You can see it's getting darker and darker. It's now gotten so dark that I can barely see him with the naked eye and the camera can't pick him up at all. So what I've done on the camera is I've switched over to a low light mode that turns the exposure way up on the camera and you can see it brightens up the picture a lot but it also makes the picture uh, run really jerky. Uh, he spent about, oh I would say about 15 minutes or so feeding in the dark and I just kept filming him kept watching him. He was fascinating. He would stand up and smell and listen for a while. Then he would lay down behind the feeder and eat corn off the ground as he lay on his belly. Then he'd get up and smell and listen some more and just keep that pattern up. At this point I've decided that I'm ready to leave and so I whistle at him to spook him off. I don't want him to see me get up and leave because I don't want him to see where my blind is at.
was a neat encounter. Obviously, I did, in fact, fool his senses. The question is, did the hex suit have anything to do with it? I don't know if there's a way to really know that. Uh, I do think it would be good for y'all to watch my other hex videos and compare his behavior to the deer in my hex videos and see if that seems like similar behavior to you or not. Thank you for watching.